So on to the first book, which is What Are You Going Through by Sigrid Nunez, who wrote The Friend, which I really loved last year. And this is her latest novel. It's a similar tone. So I think if you like The Friend, you'll like this one as well. And it's an older woman narrator and her friend. When I say older, I think they're possibly in their 60s. I don't know. Her friend is dying of cancer. And she asks the narrator to help her sort of end her life. And that's on the blurb, so that's not a plot spoiler. And it goes on from that sort of becomes the tension, I suppose, of will she do it and how will that play out? Um, and also how will the narrator feel about it and what what's she going through as well? And I really like it. I just love the tone of Sigrid Nunez's writing and her sort of wry observations and wry commentary about modern life. Um, and so it's quite a detached tone. So the narrator is not necessarily likeable. She's quite a cool character, um, but I quite like that. And it's often quite funny as well. And it's not, I don't know if it's quite as cohesive as a novel as The Friend was, but then again, I think I just sort of enjoyed reading this and almost raced through it. And there, there's a lot more to it probably than I really took in because of just I was just enjoying it um just being in her company and laughing and every so often also stopping to think every so often about some of the points she makes about she tells some women's stories so there's the theme of sad stories about women which sounds sad but isn't in fact sad to read sometimes they are but um, the way she tells them because of that detachment, you know, it's not harrowing to read, but she also sees the humour in it as well. So I really like that. And then there is this really lovely friendship theme. Um, and it's interesting because, and one of the things I love about this character, the narrator, is she's very honest, although at other times you wonder if she's keeping withholding things from you um, but she sort of says you know this woman they're not great friends and yet that friendship sort of develops in the strangest of circumstances in a way because one of them is dying and that's when they they sort of become closer um, and the other interesting thing was the woman who is dying the friend becomes sort of brutally honest because she just doesn't have time anymore for secrets or lies and so that becomes really interesting as well about how how rarely we really are honest either with ourselves or with others and there's a, a really interesting sort of vignette um, towards the end of the novel about that so I really enjoyed this I will be talking about it with Annie on the podcast and I'm looking forward to that because I think it's one of those books that you want to unpack and you know discuss in more detail so that's what are you going through please let me know if you've read it um, because I, I feel like I'm still processing that one which will happen with a few of the other books as well then on to a crime novel Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby I got onto this because he was a guest on two crime writers and a microphone the podcast and really loved it Annie and I did it on the podcast we both loved it um, it's a a sort of a heist novel and the main character Bug is a former getaway driver but he's trying to make a fresh life fresh start new life for himself he's married he's got children and he wants he's a good father and he wants to sort of stay on the right side of the law but of course things are tough with his mechanic shop and he gets lured in to do this one last diamond heist and he's a amazing he's an amazing driver and he feels most sort of his happiest and most comfortable driving in that getaway scenario but that's a conflict for him because he doesn't want to be you know going back to a life of crime and it's really well written fabulous action scenes and really complex characters especially the character of Bug or Beauregard is his proper name uh, with some humor as well with his two sidekicks that he sort of has to do this heist with who are not the brightest sparks and it's excellent it felt like a fresh take on that sort of novel and Annie and I both loved it and I think it's just been announced that it will be adapted for film uh, which would be fantastic because we both commented we can really see it 
on screen. So that is Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. Then a change of pace again, Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. So this is shortlisted for the Booker Prize. It's an Indian novel and it was published to huge acclaim in India. So there's been a lot of anticipation for this publication in the in the UK and Australia. And I really liked it. I actually did my review belatedly on the weekend and I had to go back and skim through again because even though I liked it at the time I had forgotten you know what happened and but it all came back to me and again it's one of these books I really want to discuss with someone I want to I don't know if we'll do it on the podcast but I want to sort of unpack lots of the themes and things because there's a lot left unsaid or for the reader to interpret which I really liked so it's uh, the narrator is Antara she had a an upbringing with her mother which was neglectful and uh, haphazard and including living in an ashram where her mother took up with the guru and then they were eventually they left the ashram and did it very tough um, she's now married and Tara is married but now her mother has I th- we think Alzheimer's or dementia and so Antara is having to look after her so the tables have turned um, but she's still bitter or she's still very much affected by this past and so has a fraught relationship with her mother it's quite darkly funny so there's a, a line which I think has been quoted before um, but she says early on in the book sometimes I cry when no one else is around I am grieving but it's too early to burn the body and that's the tone of it it's very very dry and I like that but some people I know Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings had to DNF it because she found it the narrator was too unlikable and then the detached tone made it hard for her to engage so but I that didn't worry me and what was interesting I think about this narrator was that yes she's unlikable because she's quite bitter and self-absorbed I think but then you look at her upbringing of neglect and so then it's up to the reader to think about is it sort of reasonable that she is Uh, quite a negative character or is she just wallowing in victimhood should she just get over it and is she just simply unlikable her husband is interesting in that regard because he is sort of a a fall guy if you like or a straight guy to her obsessions and then her mother is a very interesting character as well and it then it sort of turns a bit so that you start to feel like this narrator is quite unreliable and Tara um, is possibly unreliable. Her mother's been unreliable the whole time, of course, because she's losing her memory and so she, you know, can't be trusted. And then you start to wonder a little bit. So it's very interesting and I'm, again, still processing this. I've got a couple of other book of shortlisted ones coming up. So I'm very interested just to see how that all plays out in terms of the booker but this one certainly I think it's a quite it creeps up on you a bit I think it it reads quite breezily but there's a lot psychologically there's a lot going on here so that is um what is it Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi I then read I can't remember what order actually but I read Aristotle's Way by Edith Hall How Ancient Wisdom Can Change Your Life. And this is excellent. It was recommended by Natalie Haynes. Um, So she's a Greek classicist and the author of A Thousand Ships and Pandora's Jar most recently. And Edith Hall, also a classicist. And I think they've done an episode together on Aristotle on, on Natalie's podcast. And so Natalie recommended it. And my husband had also said it was really good. So it's excellent. It gave me this whole insight into Aristotle who was both a philosopher but also a scientist. And so he combined this sort of the high-flown ideas of philosophy and what is a just society and so justice and right and good and finding happiness with that rigour of science and observation and actual, you know, what happens in real life. And so he was quite down to earth and also what she really brings across is he was very curious, which is a great quality, very questioning, but and also open-minded. So she says even the times where he was sexist, for example, so she mentions a few things that he might have said that wouldn't fly today, but she said actually if he'd had someone 
arguing, you know, the feminist case to him, he could well have changed his mind about that because such was his sort of open-mindedness. So um, a really interesting profile of him. The main thing about this book is that then you can apply some of his wisdom to modern life. And so things like uh, how to pursue happiness or how to find, reach your potential or the importance of doing something that suits your potential or um, community and the importance of community and all the way through to mortality and how to deal with death of others or of ourselves and and just practical things that um, following his advice uh, will be helpful today. So I found it really good, very engaging, really easy to read. So it was really good. So that is Aristotle's Way. And another nonfiction, because we are in nonfiction November now, so this is a good one, um, Humankind, A Hopeful History by Rutger Bregman. And Amanda and I just did this on the podcast recently and both really liked it. I think I loved it more than Amanda did. But I heard Rutger Bregman interviewed on the How to Be Reasons to Be Cheerful podcast and found him so fascinating. So the premise of the book is he takes the idea that humans are inherently selfish and driven to driven by self-interest and he just questions that and looks at the sort of examples that are often held up uh, as evidence of that and looks behind them and he he his theory is that humans tend to be cooperative and that indeed that is there's an evolutionary basis for that, which is that um, if we don't cooperate together and if we don't trust each other, and he talks about how our, how our eyes are designed to be able to read a person's expression, for example, and know that we can trust someone, um, that if we don't have that, you know, society falls apart. And in the past, in our hunter-gatherer sort of past, that would have been quite dangerous because you need to know that you're working together and that's been the basis of our survival and it's a hallmark of us as a species that we learn that we sort of have social learning that we learn from others um, and adapt our behavior and that we play together and tell stories together and so he looks into things like war some of the experiments that have been done and the like the lord of the flies the book by william golding and then he looks at real life case a real life case in that example of how that wasn't actually how it played out when it when a group of boys was shipwrecked and um so he unpicks all of the reasons that we would think oh but but there are all these examples of humans being evil and so it's very interesting really really engaging and he's got a great writing style so you I sort of kept wanting to get back to it so very compelling read that is and it sort of makes you think even if you don't agree with everything or even if like Amanda thought he was too sort of black or white it certainly makes you think um, differently so that's a good book I think that's Humankind by Ruck Rutger Bregman and then back to the Booker shortlisted books The Shadow King by Maaza Mengiste and this was a slow read for me and by the end of it I loved it but it took a while so it just had a slow pace throughout and so I just came to sort of enjoy the characters and to appreciate what she was doing but it, it was a strange read so it's about Hirut is the main character and um, set in Ethiopia when Mussolini invaded Ethiopia and the Italians occupied Ethiopia I believe in the 1930s I hadn't known anything about this so this was all new to me um, and so you know really interesting a, a slice of history that I knew nothing about and beautifully written uh, it doesn't just focus on Hirut, so there's also the man Kidane who she works for and his wife Astra or Asta, I can't quite remember her name, isn't that terrible? But um, they're key characters as well and also a, an Italian photographer who works with the Italian army and his job is to photograph everything. So there are these interesting themes of technology. He, yeah, I didn't get so much... It, it's a book where you really have to read between the lines and it comes together by the end. But it, one of the strange things about it is given they're at war 
and there's conflict around them all the time and violence around them all the time, I never felt a sense of, you know, tension or suspense. And I maybe because I wasn't fully engaged with the characters because it just built up so slowly, it was felt slightly removed. But again, I'm really interested to hear what others thought. So please tell me if you've read this. That's The Shadow King by Maadze Mengiste. Then Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. I loved this. Again, it took a little while. It's quite long and it took a little while just to get into the rhythm of it. And then... I was completely hooked. So it's about Shuggy. I don't know if it's Shuggy or Shuggy, actually, but Shuggy Bain and his mother, Agnes, is an alcoholic. They live in Glasgow. They're, they're poor. She's got a husband called Shug and two other children, Catherine and Leek, and then they're, they're older. Shuggy's the youngest. It just traces their life, and it's at the centre of it is his relationship with his mother and it's a story of survival it's a coming of age of sorts and it's that the issue of alcoholism is really beautifully um, explored and depicted and just being poor in Glasgow at the time where the mines were closing and the impact that that had on so many families and how that played out but it is just gorgeous and I kept wanting to get back to it I didn't find it harrowing even though it sounds really bleak from the blurb for some reason it didn't read that way I mean yes of course at times you really felt for Shuggy and you you know felt sort of sad for him and you wanted Agnes to make different choices and it had all of that but it wasn't a depressing read so um, I just found it I really fell in love with it it was for a debut novel beautifully written and I felt like I was there I felt like all the characters really rang true and again very interesting in terms of the book of how all these you know how this will go because I thought this was really strong and it it just worked as a novel for me it just had it was a beautiful story and really sensitively and compassionately told so um, that's Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart and I've got one more book but I'm going to do a separate episode but just a quick recommendation The Gifts of Reading Essays on the Joys of Reading, Giving and Receiving Books curated by Jenny Orchard and inspired by Robert McFarlane so he wrote an essay of the same name The Gifts of Reading which is superb and it's in this book um, amazing list of authors Max Porter, Chigozi Obioma, Candace Carty Williams, William Boyd, Roddy Doyle. Um, I could go on and on and I will. I'll do a separate video because I've just done it on the podcast with Jenny Orchard. We did a special interview and I absolutely adored these essays. I think anyone who loves reading will really love dipping into this and there's a lot of joy to be had and also just a perfect gift idea. So the gifts of reading, non-fiction November or Christmas shopping um, very highly recommended and that is it from me let me know what you've been reading and if you've read any of the book or any of the other books what you thought I would love to hear your thoughts and I will see you soon bye for now